Hello! In this video we're talking about a sci-fi film, Mouse X. It's 15 minutes long, you can find a link to it in the description if you didn't come here from the playlist that I set up specifically so that you could watch it, but if you didn't then that's fine, I guess. So, Mouse X is about a guy named Anderson who wakes up in... somewhere weird, anyway, and finds it full of clones or copies or counterparts of himself, and also finds that as he progresses through the whatever it is, he finds himself taking on the roles of the clones he's already encountered, as if they're his future and he's inevitably catching up to them. So at one point he sees someone dragging an unconscious version of himself into a room and putting them in a chair, and later on he ends up knocking out himself and dragging himself into the room and putting himself in the chair. So basically, no matter what he tries to do, it seems like the system, or whatever he's in, requires him to do it. He cannot deviate, even though it feels like he's choosing his actions. He even, spoiler alert, last chance to see it, jumps off a building and finds that that too was anticipated, and we are left with his chilling words, not again. Now obviously there might be a lot of different interpretations you could take of the film, it's creator Justin Tag has said that he thinks it's about identity, but I think it's really good teaching material for Kant and Hume's replies to determinism. We've talked about determinism before, and how Tom Stoppard's play Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead constitutes one type of reply to it. It's the idea that events in the universe, at least at the macro level at which we operate, have causes. And those causes don't just cause their effects, they necessitate them. If the cause happens, the effect has to happen, barring some interfering cause. You can't have a cause and then the effect just decides, eh, nah. But that would hold true for events that happen inside your brain as well, which would entail that you can't do other than what you do. Your actions are as causally necessitated as everything else, so whatever option you take, even if it feels like you have a choice, you actually couldn't have done otherwise. Determinism seems to rule out free will. Some people find that idea unsettling. Anderson obviously isn't overly fond of it. Neither was Immanuel Kant, who we'll get to shortly, but David Hume? thought that it was kind of fine. Yeah. Hume thought that free will is compatible with determinism. He was a compatibilist, because he thought that free will doesn't mean being able to do other than what you do, it just means doing what you want to do. And yeah, maybe you couldn't have done otherwise, but as long as nobody forces you to do something, your will is free. It's just that the way you exercise it is determined. So Hume would say that Anderson has free will. He'd be like, what's the big deal, man? Just chill out. He does what he wants to do, he runs around and he hits people in the face with books. Nobody forces him to. And if you remember our episode on Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, you'll remember that that is the response that Guildenstern has when he finds out that he's stuck in a production of Hamlet. Kant, however, would be more concerned. Kant thought that being able to do other than what you do is essential for morality. If you aren't free in that sense, then you can't be morally responsible. You can't blame or praise anybody if their actions are determined. You can't say that somebody is bad for murdering someone or hitting them in the face with a book if they literally could not have done otherwise. You might as well blame them for their hair colour or their skin colour. They have as much control over that. Kant thought that determinism would be the end of all morality if true. So he needed a way to get out of it, which might apply to Anderson. And if you know your Kant, you'll have heard of his famous distinction between the noumenal and the phenomenal world. The phenomenal world is the world as we experience it. The noumenal world is the world as it is in itself, independent of any experience. We don't know what that is like, and we could never know, because by definition it is beyond our experience. Determinism's opening gambit is that the world appears to be determined, and that appears, Kant would say, means we are talking about the phenomenal world. The noumenal world might be determined, but we don't know, and we could never know, and that possibility of freedom, that possibility that we might be able to do other than what we actually do, even though we could never know it, Kant would say is close enough. It's close enough for rock and roll, close enough for us to say no to determinism, and close enough for us to have moral responsibility. So since we don't really find out what's going on with Anderson in the film, 
maybe he is free in the sense that he could do otherwise. Reading interviews and promotional material tells us that he is inside an experiment, but we don't know who set that up, or where it is, or where he came from, or even if he's actually human at all. We only have our experiences of his world, and those experiences are only 15 minutes long, so maybe that's enough for us to say that he could act freely. Maybe he will escape from whatever he's in by doing something other than what the system makers determined he would do. What do you guys think? What does Mouse X say about Humean and Kantian answers to determinism, and which one do you agree with? My thanks to Mr. Justin Tag for giving me permission to talk about his film. If you haven't seen it already, then it is good, I recommend it, and you will find links to it in the description. And for more philosophical videos every Friday, please subscribe. This episode was sponsored by Rich Clock, DJ, Looking Glass Universe, a bunch of other people whose names are in the description, and one other person who asked to remain anonymous, but you know exactly who you are, and you are bloody lovely. So thank you to everyone who sponsored the show, thank you so much, and if you'd like to sponsor the show, you can find out how in the description. And since I just did the sponsorship announcement, you've all gone. Nobody watches this part of the video. I could say anything I want in this bit of the video and no one would ever see it. Chocolate cake. If you're watching this part of the show, comment ibble bibble bibble. Now I, I have the um I have the script here, I have the script in my hand when I film the videos. Uh I had to wear a collared shirt for this video because uh I've got hickeys. <laughs>